thanks very much, Eric. And uh, thanks also, Craig, for the introduction. I'm also a, a bull on copper. Uh, he mentioned Minahusta. That was a discovery that my team made uh, many years ago. So I'm very familiar with that. We drilled the first 100 holes into that. I've, uh, I've been involved with copper exploration for probably 30 years now, including 24 years with Rio Tinto. Made a few few copper discoveries. The Constancia porphyry in, in Peru as well. I was involved with the La Granca uh, copper uh, deposit as well. Also made a discovery in, in the Iberian Pyra Belt where we've got our, yet another discovery uh, at our, at our uh, La Romana target. So thanks, Craig. <laughs> Yeah, so um, as I said, we've got, um, we've got a new copper tin silver discovery um, at our La Romana target in our Escocena project. It's located in the Iberian Pirate Belt, um, which is a, a famous mineral belt. Um, it's, and I'll show you a little bit more about that. Uh, the project is quite advanced now. We've uh, got continuous mineralisation over 1.2 kilometres, over 150 drill holes into it. So we're sort of we're backstopping our value. Um, and it's de-risking it all the time as we drill more holes. Um, in addition to the, the upside we've got at that discovery, and it's completely open, and this new access agreement we've got is opening the door to that extension, uh, we've got many other targets. We're target rich and uh, plenty of opportunity to make additional discoveries in this pretty exciting package of, of ground. As I say, it's a very established mining area. It's got great infrastructure, great permitting, mining friendly, and it's in Europe. Um, we just announced uh, earlier this week, we've just added a, another board member, Corinne Smith. Uh, Corinne brings metal marketing experience and also some uh, capital market experience, etc. a great addition to our team. But in addition to that, we've got mine builders, mine finders, and so on on the board. Our team on the ground includes eight geologists. We've got two mining engineers as well. So we can take projects from pre-resource right through to development. We have that depth of capacity. Um, yeah, we've got cash in the bank. At the beginning at the end of January, the end of the finance, Canadian financial year, we had 8.9 million. Uh, we're currently sitting in with a bit over 6 million in the bank. Uh, we've got an 8.5 million budget earmark for this year, including 20,000 metres. It's fully funded. So I'm not going to talk about the copper price too much, but I'm, I'm in, in, in Craig's camp. I think we're heading for a really exciting period of high copper prices. I, I don't see any alternative if the world's going to, if we're going to su supply the amount of copper that the world's going to need over the next uh, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, the copper price has to go up. So I think for us, having a copper project in Europe, having something that could potentially be brought into production in the next five to ten years, when copper prices are expected to be really uh, spiking, I think that is a big advantage for us. Um, add to that that copper is now on the critical minerals list in Europe. That's going to bring a lot of benefits for us. It could be f a financing for uh, infrastructure, streamlining, st streamlining the permitting process, etc. So I think we're, I think we, uh, companies in that sort of situation are pretty rare. Um, so I think we're really well positioned when the copper price starts to move along a bit further and China starts buying chopper, uh, copper again, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully be one of the companies that people will, will pick up soonest. As I say, we're in the Iberian Pirate Belt. This is, uh, as a volcanogenic massive sulphide district, there's nothing else like it on the planet. There's more of these sort of supergiant VMS deposits than any other VMS district in the world. Um, that's the, these sort of things with plus 100 million tonnes, very large. Um, we're at the eastern end of this belt. We're surrounded by some other miners. There's seven big operating mines in the belt, including some big operators like Lundin, uh, First Quantum, um, a group of Mexico right next door to us, um, and so on. Freeport has a smelter about 70 kilometres from us. Um, so, uh, you know, we're in a, in a, in a great location. Just zooming in on our project there, it's about 5,700 hectares outlined here in yellow. Our discovery at La Romana is in that red blob in the south. But as you can see, we're surrounded by some, big, some other, other uh, operations. Atalaya mi uh, mining at the site of the original Rio Tinto mine. That's the world's biggest VMS deposit. From some estimates over 2 million tonnes. They've got 200 million tonnes of reserves at about 0.39% copper. 
a large open pit operation, good a good uh, uh, benchmark for us as well, not necessarily on the size, but in terms of mining costs, etc., and what's achievable. Um, right next door to us, Group of Mexico uh, are looking to restart mining at, at Los Frailes. There were two large open pit mines that were operated by Belieden. Um, so the uh, Group of Mexico, at least report, local reports, are anticipating that construction could commence at Los Frailes as early as in sometime this year. So that'll bring infrastructure and other things, other benefits for us as well. So they're right next door to us. And then you've got First Quantum at Las Cruces Mine just down the road as well. So they're just fully permitted to go underground, but it was one of the world's highest grade open pit copper mines. So again, we're, so we're in good, good company here. This is a, a gravity anomaly map. So we're target rich. Um, so gravity as an exploration tool in this province is very effective. Many discoveries have been made by directly drilling gravity anomalies. The Los Frailes deposit just to the east where Group of Mexico are about to start mining, that was found by drilling that gravity anomaly. Las Cruces to the east was found by drilling gravity. Add to that Nevis Corvo and now our discovery at La Romana in the south. We've only had access to the eastern half of that. It's the western half that we've now got access to. Access to. But as you can see, we've, we've got lots of big gravity anomalies in this property, most of which are untested at this stage. Um, and there's a big, this big land area that we've got, just got access to last week. It is, is, covers about 12% of the, of the property, but a number of these, these targets. So I think we've got excellent potential here to make additional discoveries. This is just a quick map that shows the, the big area that we've just had uh, uh, secured a big access agreement. As I say, 12% of our land area. Not only does it cover our highest priority target, which is the western extension of our copper tin silver discovery at Romana, but it also comes with several access to several other big, big targets as well. So watch this space. We've hit the ground running on that. So just zooming in on our discovery area, the brown blobs here are, are gravity anomalies. Um, and you can see a red uh, patch there. That's the 0.2% copper grade shell of our La Romana discovery. It coincides very closely with the gravity anomaly. Uh, the big feature to the west at Romana West, that's completely untested. So there's old mine workings on, on that. Uh, so we've got some indication the copper continues over in that direction. Uh, we've, we've already identified 1.2 kilometres of strike, continuous mineralisation coming to surface in the south, very simple geometry dipping to the, to the north. I've got some cross sections in a minute. Uh, we've drilled up to the fence boundary of this, of this farm. I'm not sure if I can get this to work, but uh, anyway, that's what's been limiting our west, the western boundary. It's com completely opened in that direction. Um, so we, after getting the access side, we've had teams on, on, on the ground already. We're, we're, we should have drill rigs rolling on there um, in a couple of weeks or so. A few cross sections. Uh, again, very simple geometry. Uh, it's the simplicity of this, uh, this project, I think, gives a big advantage. You're seeing uh, it's very flat topography, uh, very predictable, 35 to 40 degrees dip, very well suited for open pit. Um, we get grade distribution, high, some of the highest grades and thickest intersections closest to surface. We're also finding some mineralisation in the hanging wall and footwall that would also potentially fall within an open pit. Again, some very thick sections. This, uh, we're getting uh, copper mineralisation over 50 to 70 metre thicknesses here. Again, some of the highest, highest grades closer to surface, open at depth. Um, I should note on this section, we drilled hole number 40. And that's when we did our last financing. That was in mid-2021. We did that at 60 cents. We now drilled another 110 holes at this prospect. In fact, we call it hole number 159 this week. Um, so the share price is sitting at 35 cents. Yet, yeah, we've, we've probably trebled or quadrupled the size of the body of mineralisation and our share price is sitting where it is. So um, I think we're, we're extraordinarily cheap at this, this stage and we're, seeing, uh, we're getting a lot of inbounds now from, from institutions in particular. We also put out some metal, metallurgy results just recently. Again, these are excellent results. So these are the first lock cycle test. This is what really gives you a best uh, indication of what you might be able to achieve in a commercial uh, situation. These are very high uh, recoveries and high concentrate grades for, compared to all the operating mines in the belt. They'd love to have this sort of stuff. In addition to that, it's very coarse grain. 
um, and that means that translates into energy uh, costs. So when many of these mines have to grind at 10 to 20 microns or whatever, we're looking at starting at 106 microns. That's a big deal. That's where money is made. Add to that as well, we don't have any deleterious minerals and it looks like we'll get a silver kicker as well. So it's not just one thing that really is uh, adding up here. It's this, that uh, we've got yeah, near surface, great location, great metallurgy. Um, yeah, yeah, the very simple geometry, not folded and faulted up or anything like this. So it's all of those things that are contributing here that will enable us to really push the, the cutoff grades. We're already very advanced in terms of our block modelling. We started our environmental baseline work for a, pre, for a resource um, last year. Um, so we're, we're well down the track and I think we'll come out with a pretty high, high level category of resource when we, when we do that. And what's been constraining us has been working out how big this dis our discovery could be. And that, that's been the access to that area to the west. So, uh, you know, I'm, again, one, another reason I remain convinced we're going to make another discovery in this property is that we, these deposits typically occur in clusters. And I've shown here the example of Nevis Corvo uh, at the same scale, seven different ore bodies in that, uh, that make up that cluster. And there are many examples like this in the pirate belt. So I think, you know, we've got... It's, it'd be very unusual if, if Lara Mana was to sit there on its own. So I think we're, yeah, we've got a very good chance of making another discovery here. As I say, we're already on the ground at our Romana West target. Uh, yeah, my, all my team had never been to these old mine workings. Yeah, we've had the mineral rights granted for four years. So they were on the The day after we signed the access agreement, they were in there um, looking at these old mines. So we've got indications of high-grade copper mineralisation coming right to surface in that western extension, it's about 250 to 300 metres west of where we've drilled to so far, and it looks like the mineralisation continues uh, to the west. So we've got a 25 to 30 hole uh, program planned for that. We've got uh, three geophysics crews on the ground there already. So we should have drill rigs rolling on there sometime in, in the next month. Another target, uh, yeah, big gravity anomaly. Uh, we've just drilled two holes uh, there on the eastern end of that where we had a, a very nice looking geophysics target beneath some old mine workings. Uh, we've, uh, I was hoping to have the results of that in time for this, uh, this um, conference, but uh, hopefully we'll have, that, have something out early next week. But I should say we fast-tracked those results. Um, we've also already now added another two drill holes to, to test that. So um, watch this space. Okay, just, uh, just in summary, uh, We've got money in the bank. We've got a bit over six million there. Uh, insiders own about nine percent on a fully diluted base. That's about fifteen percent. Um, we've got some we've got some new institutions in this year, so I think we're we're quite well supported, um, and we've got good we've got price targets set by some of the, uh, the the analysts that are covering us from a dollar to a dollar thirty. So I think I'll leave it there, Eric. But we've got a lot of news, uh, and I think we're going to make some more discoveries here soon.